Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is the 116 Life on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius Channel 140. I'm one of your hosts, Ace Harris, here with my amazing co-host. Mia Evans in the building, man. Listen, Ace, how you feeling? I'm good. I'm good. You know, today's a good day, sunny, um, springtime. You know what I'm saying? I'm it feels, feels great, man. It feels great. The pollen's yeah. kind of been kicking everybody. Yeah. I got a car wash. There was no point in me getting a car wash. Oh, yeah, there's wash. no point. You might as well just Everyone's car out here looking like lemon pepper wings. <laughs> Yo, Atlanta is... <laughs> Notorious for that too. I feel like our weather is just like annoying. Like the pollen doesn't go anywhere, yeah. and then trying to wash it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we got a special, amazing guest, someone who you know very well. Who I know very well, Come man. On. Listen, um, she I've known her for a very, very long time, I mean, Ace. For how long? And, how long would you say? Um, you know? I'm well, I'm 27, so probably like I think like 27 years <laughs> of my life. She's um, she's a broadcaster. She's a media personality, and she's here on the 116 Life, man. Let's give it up for Misa Jones, Misa Jones. Hey, who is hey. on the 116 Y'all, Life. This is not the 116 Life anymore. This is the one one six um life slash Eminem live radio. Is this a crossover episode? This I mean, is our crossover basically. episode. Like like you know when like Timmy Turner and Jimmy Neutron <laughs> had like that crossover episode. Is that what this is? This Pretty is much what it. it is. I mean like I'm honestly sitting here between two goats. You know what I'm saying in in the, in the media space. So I'm just gonna sit back, let y'all do what y'all uh, do. Says the two time Grammy Award nah, winning producer. I be telling him the here same thing. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> no, but when I tell y'all seriously, like if I could just take a moment, I appreciate y'all so much. Thank like you. Ace, you have grown as an interviewer. You are killing it. I be telling you seriously. I be telling but like, even, but Thank even you. Mia, like you, uh, Mia years ago, me. years ago, she would not even want to <laughs> shake hands with anybody. I can't believe it. I, every time y'all say this or she says it. Mia, you're the most outgoing person I know. <laughs> That's a lot. Well, I, I don't seriously. Go. No, so it's thank dope. y'all. Thank y'all. I mean, for me out me here on. going viral on clips and stuff. How's it feel? Not how's it feel. It's not about me. Ace, <laughs> listen. So, so listen. So, y'all. Um, if I can even bring things full circle, like talking about knowing Misa, twenty-seven years of my life. Misa is my blood sister. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. same mom, same dad. Mm-hmm. And um, we're so happy to have you on the one one six life. How describe this season of life you're in right now? How's this this season of life been treating you? This season of life, I feel like. It's like the pollen that y'all mm. were talking about. Well, and what, what, that's, that's and, and a, in what way? I'm glad you asked. Okay. Is like literally, I feel like pollen is it, is so it's so needed. Number one, like in order to, to pollinate and grow For more sure. beautiful plants and stuff. I'm in such a season of growth. Um, I have become a first time home owner. I have two beautiful girls with mm. my husband, my best friend, Kimo Jones. Um, I've been doing really well as far as like staying on top of my goals. Mm. I work on staff at Stockbridge Community Church mm. as a first impressions coordinator. I celebrated two years of being there. Congratulations, Thank that's you crazy. so much. And then on top of that, Eminem Live Radio doing some great things. But I ain't gonna lie to you, the pollen got a bad side, not a, necessarily a bad side, but a, a not so great and celebrated side, which honestly there's moments in which I just feel like, Lord, I'm kind of mm. struggling. I feel you. You know, I'm juggling. How, yeah. how old are your kids? So my oldest just turned three. And then um, my youngest is about to be one years old in like a couple weeks. Let's all just gather in prayer uh, for the Jones household. Right please now. go ahead and lead us nah. in, Ace, please. <laughs> I, I, I definitely <laughs> I asked because I, I got a couple friends with mm-hmm. like young children, multiple young children. I, yeah. I had one friend who they're older now who had a, the, the kids' ages were four, three, two, and one Whoa. for one season. What a countdown. <laughs> yeah, for real. And it's like I... When I see parents mm-hmm. um, and, 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 and couples who are having young children, and not just one, but two to three, under three, I just can see that when you say that, I know exactly how you feel. Yeah. Um, yeah it's like I've juggling. been there. It's like juggling. It's You like all over the place. Yeah. So how, how have you been finding time to still maintain, uh, you know, Misa Jones and what God's called you? Like, how's that, how's that been as a... Uh, a new homeowner, a, I guess a new a new mother, mm-hmm, essentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I'm not gonna lie to you, Ace. Honestly, there's moments in which I, I'm still trying to figure that part out. Yeah, but I've learned that if I don't put things on the calendar, like my really big rocks and big things that I want to have happen in my day, mm-hmm. it's not going to get done. Okay. It's mm-hmm. not okay. going to get done. Like, I mean, like during the work day, I, I've, of course, I, I'm very struggled. I'm, I'm very scheduled. I'm very structured. Yeah. But then there's moments where I'm like at home. I want to just relax. I don't even want to look at a calendar. I feel you. But then there's moments where I'm like, I still want to get things done at home. Right. I still want to be able to be intentional parents we want to take the kids out to the park we want to be able to have intentional uh a date time with me and my oh, husband yeah. like i want to be able to still do the things that god has called me to be and be a creative at home so i, I really try to make sure that i, I schedule block out times gotcha. and i'm like really being intentional about the time that i have carved out so that i can do the things that i want to do that's a dope nugget i think for creatives oh yeah um 
my, my creatives who don't have necessarily like kids or or in deep relationship can probably have a luxury of this but yo carving out time for mm. things is a hack yes. man even listen, your you know downtime like just, yes just putting that thing out i'm not yeah. doing anything can, can you talk about how you feel like um creators can benefit from that because i feel like um sometimes creativity and structure don't necessarily align but in a busy schedule it's almost like inevitable or it's almost <laughs> the disadvantage advantageous not to have that why is that important mm. like especially for the artists that like are tuning in yeah absolutely i feel like when it comes to creativity there's moments where and i personally there's there's moments where i have like you know writer's block mm. like for example yeah and then if you just if you just sit there in your moment of not knowing what to do not knowing how to create you're not going to find that inspiration that you need so even if it's like going for a walk on the atlanta belt lines good. like you can have some moments of inspiration or carving out time to hang out with your mentor or or, or carving out time just to simply be quiet that's there's good. so much inspiration mm. and there's so much that could come out of simply being still simply having your rest simply having a moment in which you can be filled back into you you've got to at least just have those moments in which you're able to like okay have moments to yourself be still mm. uh, uh pour back into yourself so that you can uh, rise to the occasion no. or like go back into whatever you're being creative with that's so that's so good yeah. I'm, just, I'm definitely chewing on that so talk to us about um you know, Eminem Live Radio. I mean, Mia, you pretty much, you know, gave us the, the backstory. I want to hear from your side. Yeah. Because I feel like, you know, I just got one half of the story. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, she lying. She lying. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but I, 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 it's, it's, it's amazing to see. Uh, I don't know how many years apart are you guys. We're two uh, years that's apart. That's amazing. Sweet spot. My kids are two years apart, too. Oh, and yeah. I grew up with a brother who was two years older than me. So mm. shout out all the parents. Um, try to have your kids close together if you can. Because... <laughs> For real, it just creates like no, a certain it, camaraderie. It, it creates a great bond. Like when I see yeah. when I saw y'all yeah. pull up, I mm. saw like the smile. Me, like y'all look like y'all really been doing life together, literally all y'all life. And is the bond is still strong as it seemed like it's been probably since y'all was little. Oh yeah, my parents do not play when it huh. comes to us like being frustrated, arguing with each other. They're very much so. My dad even said, huh. "I gave you a best friend." I'm not quite sure how to still feel about that. Really? So you, yes. uh, why, why would he say that? Well, he said that a lot of times because if if there was ever a moment where Mia and I were at odds with one another or um, if we just weren't speaking, he would always tell us, whatever you're dealing with, you got to fix it mm -hmm. because that is the best friend that you can count on. Like all these other people, yeah, I mean, you might not be able to trust their intentions, their motives so uh, or their heart behind making decisions with you, but you can definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, because I made this best friend for you, you got to make that's sure that you so, make you you, you got to make right with your sister. That's so, so good, and yeah. it, and it's biblical too. I mean, there's it so many. That's a, I can probably like go off on a tangent on how powerful that mm -hmm. statement that you just said. Mm -hmm. You have a best friend. You have someone you can count on because it's so easy to. I mean, she's gonna be your sister for life. Yeah, right? there's nothing that can change that. Right, right. Um, and I think that's powerful. So thinking about that, talk about how it was getting to the point of launching Eminem Live Radio because it seems like a great rosy story. But I'm sure there's some stuff where there was some little, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Some some like yeah. tension, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So talk about how that came together. So uh, so Eminem Live Radio started. I was a uh, I was a senior at, in high school. We went to the Cav School of the Arts in Avondale, and uh, and Mia was a I think you were a sophomore. sophomore. Mm -hmm. You were great a sophomore. school by the way. So yeah, yeah. awesome. My school, my, awesome. my niece goes there. Really? Yeah, yeah. What? Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we went, we went to DSA. And um, it was just regular, you know, school day. Afterwards, my, my mom picked us all up and we were listening to a traditional gospel station right. on the radio. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. At, at that moment, I was like, I just want to, you know, plug in my iPod. At the time, everybody had iPods. Right. And I just want to plug in my iPod and like turn up to all the music that I'm used to listening to, you know, at the parties, at the kickbacks, at the, you know, uh, homecoming parties and yeah. stuff. However, I knew as a Christian teenager, I knew that the lyrics that were in the songs that was in my iPod probably was not something I should be listening to or even putting in the ox court with my mom in the car. So I was listening to the traditional gospel song. And even though that's probably the lyrics that I should be listening to, I got kind of turned off. Okay. I was like, I'm, I'm kind of bored. It was kind of no mid. Offense. Yeah, it was <laughs> super mid. Like, seriously. It's no offense to the gospel no crowd. But, no but sometimes sometimes the mid needs to be said. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But then, um, so me and I had a conversation about that traditional gospel song that was playing on the radio. And yeah. I was like, you know, I think it'll be so dope 
if there was like, I don't know, like a teen and young adult radio show mm -hmm. that was geared towards our generation that mm -hmm. gave us the beat that the Chris Browns, the Rihanna's, yeah. like all the all the artists in my iPod. However, it gave us the motivational and encouraging lyrics that the traditional gospel song was kind of giving us. Sure. And she was like, yeah, I think that'll be kind of dope. And, you know, we, we kind of tossed the idea around and it wasn't until I was like, why don't that be us? Like, why don't we be the change that we want to see? I love that. And, you know, we were like, well, I don't know where to start. But the first thing I just know without a shadow of a doubt was my mom was like, write the vision, make it plain. We had a little tablet. We wrote down, if we had the radio show, what was the name of the radio Shut show? Shut up, Mom. When I tell you, like, she had no idea, but she was like, I just write the idea down. So, so, so at the time, did was the plan for both of you guys to, like, start the show? Like, or was it like, yo, I'm, this is my, like, who, who's initial? Now, I, ain't trying, I, ain't, I ain't trying to, like, say there was a credit to be given, but mm -hmm. whose initial idea was it? So it, it was literally us at the same okay. time. Like yeah, when I tell you, good. like Mia and I, we, we bounce ideas off of each other. Okay. All the time. I would yeah, say see, that. You kind of move like that. Yeah, yeah. I, would, I would say if it was, I was like, yeah, like we should do that. Then Misa was like, yeah, we should do that. So it's kind of like, I, I think it was kind of like a half and half. Like we, but we, I had the, like the idea popped in, but yeah. like the execution Misa was like, yeah, let's do it. And I, usually yeah. it's like we, we're always together. So why not do it? together yeah. yeah 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 so that's when we wrote yeah. everything down we were like if we had giveaways we were giving away cars we were giving away <laughs> cruise trip tickets we were like giving away different dif different things of that nature we had the name of the segments that we wanted on the show listed the names of the artists we wanted to have on the show we had everything written on down to the t and then i want to say maybe a month or so or mm -hmm. some some weeks later we were at our church regular sunday and in the lobby of our church somebody that went to the church walked up to my mom and was like, hey, um, I don't know why I'm giving you this. So it had to have been a God moment. I'm not quite sure why I'm giving you this, but I know somebody that has um, a radio station that they manage and they're looking for people to put on the airwaves. Hmm. Do you know anybody that's looking for a radio airtime? Gave my mom the card. She's sitting in service like, why am I holding? Like, what is this? Hmm. And it wasn't until at that moment, I think God dropped in her system. Your kids are trying to start something big and be on the radio hmm. and create a teeny young adult radio hmm. show. Like, why don't you let this be an opportunity? So at that point, we had a conversation after service. She was like, let's set up an interview or let's set up a, a meeting at least with them. Ace, we had no experience. I'm si I'm 18, Mia is 16. We brought the idea, the, all the vision that we wrote down on that piece of paper to that manager. And he was like, this is going to be your opportunity. I want for you to start this day. You're going to uh, record every single week. I'm so excited <laughs> for this opportunity. I'm, let, let's do That's it. Fire. So it had to have been something so that God definitely wanted to have aligned in our path. It was, it was just like a, he was just, I mean, it's almost surreal hearing that story, uh, Misa, because it's just like the timing of when you guys were in the car mm -hmm. to when it actually came out. And mm -hmm. talk about um, specifically you, Misa. Like, I mean, Mia has always, uh, you know, mentioned sing, sung your praises about how she kind of leaned on you mm -hmm. to kind of be the lead in mm -hmm. that program and in that and that what was it in you like what was in you that led you to kind of like be the leader in that space like was it you just naturally like the older sister like what is it about you that would kind of qualify you to kind of roam at that idea to lead that vision out you know what i'm saying to because I, I, I mean obviously you guys work as a team but yeah, you yeah, specifically yeah. you had a a, a unique place in the, in the, in this in this program. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to lie to you, Ace. I think, honestly, the church that we went to at the time, we grew up going to World Changers Church International in College Park. And uh, we had a bomb youth ministry, mm -hmm. especially growing up at that time. Mm -hmm. but, um, but at that time, it was called Big Student Ministries. And we had some amazing youth leaders that poured so much into the kids, into the students. And um, there was, and she's still there, shout out to Alyssa Worrell, Pastor mm -hmm. Alyssa Wor Worrell. She was the middle school youth pastor mm -hmm. at the time. And we were putting on youth conferences left and right. When I had, when I tell you, students were coming from uh, Africa, like flying in to America to attend our youth conference. It was just insane. But I, 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 wanna, I wanna give her her flowers, Sister Alyssa her flowers, because she was just so big when it came to like personality mm -hmm. and she knew how to mm -hmm. host and work a crowd. Like when she would hit the stage, hit the mic, everybody would just like, not necessarily fell in love with her, her, but it was like just the God on the inside of her sure. attracting people to, you know, and it, it was just, it was amazing to witness. And at a young age, even mm. before Eminem Live Radio was a thing, she saw something in me and was like, hey, me, you know, Misa, I want to bring your parents in. I want to like just share with them what I see in you so, so that you can be grown, so that you can be groomed to 
work a crowd and to host the way that you do, you know, the way that I can see you hosting. So she taught me the importance of like being real big, being real open, welcoming people when they come For anywhere. Sure. And, um, and just simply using my voice to glorify God. And I learned that at a very young age and she poured so much into it. She, she poured so much of that into me mm -hmm. and cultivated me to the point where I was like, I kind of feel like I have a little bit of experience mm. of how to host and how to speak and how to bring people to Christ through my voice. And me, at that time she was be, she was young she was very much so in her shell very introverted and so I knew that this was going to be something that was outside of her comfort zone but I was like I know you can do it mm. I know you can do it yeah. you know what I'm saying so it, it was at that moment yeah. somebody seeing something in me me seeing something in Eminem Live Radio. Yep. And then at that point, I had to leave because I did have the experience. And then that's when Mia started popping off and going crazy <laughs> like she is right now, you know. And that's honestly, so I'm happy you made that segue, Misa, because when we come back, we got to dive way more into young Misa, into mm -hmm. the what the moments that molded Misa into who she is today. So don't go anywhere. It's Misa Jones is here with Ace Harris and myself here on the 116 Live here on Holy Culture Radio Series XM channel, channel 140. Listen, we'll be right back. Welcome, welcome back. This is the 116 Life on Holy Culture Radio Series Channel 140. I'm your host, Ace Harris, here with Mia Evans and her amazing sister, Misa Jones. What's up? What's in the up? building. In the building. What's up? You know, just, you know, you, you very much used to this microphone. You be killing it. You're obviously, you know what? You said something earlier that I want to like call out some. Mm. Um, you said God gave you a voice mm. to lead people to him. And you know what? We, especially in the hip hop world, we be taking these mics for granted. I feel like at time. And also sometimes we'll be hogging this mic. Like mm -hmm. essentially you're an MC. Like you yeah. be, like you essentially use your voice mm -hmm. to host, welcome and lead people to something greater. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I I don't know if you got bars. I don't know if you can rap. I'm sure you probably rapped in your time at some point. What's going on here? Everybody who's like a fan of Christian hip-hop has a verse somewhere, I feel like. That's just my what? honest thoughts. Ace, this is insane. Is, so, so you, are you denying it? I'm denying it. Oh, okay. All right. I mean, is this true? It's true. Okay. Okay. It's true. So, okay. You, you know, I, I, tell you, I tell you if she could. If I could. Oh, you would. I would. But, but, but okay. people I, people have said to me in the past, like, do you rap? Like, you just have like a voice like you... you just you assume, got bars. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. Ain't gonna lie. Are you serious? Everybody on like, it's not even a Christian hip hop thing. It's like uh -huh. a music industry thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of people in the music industry who even work behind the scenes, mm -hmm. even on this office side, people got recordings for real, for are real. Are you serious? I, I can name drop a few, but I ain't trying to get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to keep it right no, there. No, but the funny thing is, is, I mean, we've gotten so many times, Mia, you can attest to this. Are y'all a singing group? Oh, oh my I can see God. that. I can see that. And I'm like, a singing group? And it's funny because like a lot of times like when we would like get dressed and go to different events and whatnot, we would try to like we'll coordinate, coordinate our outfits you know a little bit. I mean, we were hosting on stage, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm I'm wondering if that was the reason why, you know, because yeah. groups tend to kind of coordinate. And yeah, that know, I've never gotten. Do you rap? I mean, you got to like a, you have like a your aura. So you have like, a, like mm -hmm. the way you profess and, you know, use your voice. But speaking of which, I want to hear like obviously we've heard your story, Mia, growing up. Uh, we actually joked offline about some of the family. I think yeah. I think something went viral that you said about your family uh, being waking up, waking up on Saturday mornings, which is a whole nother yep. tangent we can go on. But mm -hmm. what was it like? <laughs> I want to hear from you, Misa. Yeah. What was it like growing up in your household? Like, what was the spiritual temperature, the family dynamics? Like, mm -hmm. what was it like according to you? Yes. So um, with our family dynamic, we were were very, very, very tight. Our family can get very competitive when it comes to like any type of game, any type of board game, um, any family outing. If it's kickball, it's on site. Oh my like, goodness. It's going to be crazy. But um, our family is very committed when it comes to like serving at our church. Right. My dad growing up, he, he used to be in the um, in the choir. My mom, she teach uh, financial literacy. Uh, of course, like I mentioned, we were in a, a very great, very, very um, healthy youth group. And me and I served at high capacities. So even though we're not at those churches and we have, you know, branched off into different ministries, we still do that. Mm. We still we still say that serving is a very important part of our mm. lives. Um if anything, uh, with our family, I, I was joking with Ace off camera, but um, we're hard workers. We, mm. we like to do a lot of hard work together as a family. We have a couple businesses as a family. Mm. So we keep a lot of different things in the family dynamic. That's so good. And um, my father, he's a, he's a landscaper. And when I tell you, if he needed help out in the yard, 
Them girls put them boots on, we put them <laughs> gloves on, and we were out there in the yard. And it was it was so crazy to the point where he used to have like five riding lawnmowers at one time. That's a lot. And we were on, what? We were on 17 acres of land, and it was kind of like Mario Kart. Every person was on like a lawnmower. We would race each other That's and make crazy. sure the yard was cut. But we did those things because we we celebrate family. Yeah. And family's just so important, not only just to our, int- our, our immediate family, yeah. but also like the grandparents are equally involved. We have cousins that come. Are the over. grandparents with y'all? Grown, they live near. So, so they they live very closely. That's they so good. they live very very closely. But but when it comes to like family, we we do not take arguments into the next day. We got to make oh, sure that we take care of the great. issue right then and there because it's it's important to us. That's so good. I mean, obviously the family dynamic seems to be really. I mean, the people who are watching who probably didn't have that growing up are probably yeah. hearing you tell the story and being like, man, I wish I had a yeah. family like that. And yeah. I, I'm sure you guys don't take it for granted. I can just see it the way. Um, you guys interact with each other, oh, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, obviously, you know, you guys grew up in the church. I grew up in the church. I'm sure there's plenty of viewers who have like people with label as church kids. Like mm-hmm. I'm a church kid. My dad's a pastor. I've been in church all my life. Saturday, oh, Sunday. PK. Yeah, I'm a PK. Yeah. So it's like, and you guys were active in y'all's church mm-hmm. and everybody comes to faith their own way. Mm-hmm. How was your like relationship with the Lord in light of you being a church kid? Was it like, it's laid out. I walk right into it. Or was there like any like moments of like, ah, I don't know if I'm believing this, or rejecting this. How was it you come into faith being like someone who was so exposed and so culturally mm-hmm. Christian? You know what I mean? I don't know. I feel like for me, because I had always gone to church and my parents made church important and a priority, we had always been in church as long as I could ever remember. I remember when we used to live in Arkansas we would fly into Atlanta once a month to go to church Mm. because my mom was watching, you know, uh, Pastor Creflo Dollar at that time in Arkansas where we were living. And she just fell in love so much with this ministry that he was like, she said, I I have to be here. I have Mm. to be in Atlanta. So um, we went to the children's ministry um, Mia, Mia got saved about four times. Lisa, this is not about me. It's, it's not about you, you but I want, I want to hey, so explain. But what I heard was she backslid four times. She about four times. I wanted was, to make uh, sure I 10. was going to get in. It was That's under the all. age of 10. Hey, so back, back then, especially in kids ministry, I'm not quite sure how things happen now in kids ministry or children's yeah. ministry, but every time a child gave their life to Christ and said like the Christ follower prayer and receive salvation, they would receive a, um, a certificate with their name, the date, I accepted Christ for the first time. Mia got four of them. <laughs> so if there's anybody who's going to be in the Lamb's Book of Life, it's when Mia the Lord Evans. calls us home, it's going to be Mia Evans. Shout out the certificate I'm technology. Be Shout out to the proof, because I don't know where mine is. <laughs> I'm like, it's like, yo, if you didn't know, we, we're going to write it down <laughs> yeah. to show people that yeah. they got in, which is a whole nother, I can, I can go on a tangent on that. It's like, <laughs> if, if God knows you in, you won't got to... Fit it on a piece of paper, but. right? You know what I'm yeah. saying. But, but I gotta I, show y'all. I, I say all that to say I, we have been in ministry for a long time, okay. and and my mom, like I said, she she made it very very important that if, if we're going to church, I'm me and my, me and your dad are going to big church, and y'all are gonna receive the word on your level because I feel like that's also important. That's too. very important. Super important. important. So because sometimes like um, church culture gets such a stigmatism. Mm-hmm. You got certain people on major platforms mm-hmm. saying certain things, which I think they mean well. Where the, they're just kind of like downplaying the church or criticizing the church Mm -hmm. but it seemed like the church that people often especially millennial culture are criticizing helped shaped your faith like would you would you feel like you being a church kid i mean it seemed like you're counting it as a benefit right i mean am am i am i am i assuming is that right to say no i feel like and and are you saying that the church the church culture that has shifted well uh, well specifically people well, people that I'm around at times, yeah. they look at church as, as something that this church didn't do this right. These youth groups weren't that good, yada, yada, oh, yada. Okay. But you're someone who's like, no, nah, I grew up in church. I was in church all the time. I love the Lord. Everything was good. That's not my experience. Like, mm-hmm. Do you feel like your faith um, was genuinely something that was shaped because you were in church? Did you come to the Lord in a way, in, a, in like a personal way? Or was it kind of like cliche because you were always around church? Like, Talk about you coming to faith, Misa Jones, knowing though, not just being in church, but... Right. How did that experience kind of shape out for you? I don't I feel like with with me, I genuinely came to Christ because my mom, well, my mom and my dad did encourage for us to go to church. Right. I don't feel like they forced us 
to go to church. Right. And I felt like that's what made it genuine for me. Even oh. though I was a child, okay. um, I was able to make my own friends. And my own friends, uh, they're still my friends to this day. That's Had so I good. not gone to church right. or even like attended church, children's church at that time, I wouldn't have these friends that I have to mm. this day. You know what I'm saying? So you, you look forward to going to church. I look forward to going to church. That's such a church. key takeaway that yeah. I think people who like have a bad experience with church mm -hmm. can't always honestly say that yeah. for whatever reason you know right what right right and and i think also mm -hmm. the community was just so important at that time like mm -hmm. i mentioned earlier I, I mentioned i gave my flowers to uh our youth leader at the time Alyssa warrell she helped be a part of my village right and she helped shape my future that's why i am in the field that i am right now because of her gotcha. and they made it they made it so attractive mm -hmm. to gotcha. be in the faith in the and faith. to and my our youth pastor he was he did a great job of also like breaking down to us different things of, of showing the world's view of life right and the words view of life and how we can contribute to god's kingdom and not so much to the world so life let me ask you things. this so, so some people are watching me say and they're just like everything just looks so rosy mm -hmm. like Man, you've had a, like, was there any moment where you were like, ah, I'm not sure about this life or this church culture? Or were you pretty much like, I like this, I'm bought in? I just want to see, was, was there any moments of doubt, right? In, in being involved in church yeah. or following the Lord? Because, again, we have people that come to Christ and come to faith, especially in our circles from different. Some folks just like, yo, they needed Jesus because they ain't gonna lie, they was headed to yeah. <laughs> a hot place. Oh my goodness. Like, yeah. But for, for people who are culturally Christian mm -hmm. in ch church community, I, Sometimes the story is just a little different. So I want to, I just want to hear like, was there any doubt or was it like you just, cause you seem to just be so like comfortably bright and so sure your faith, which is encouraging for me. Yeah. There, was, there, there was, there was some moments and it's like the enemy knows how to get at you at the, at the real small, yeah. slight moments. Like yeah. if there's ever holes in the, in, in the, in the picture, he knows how to get in and really get, get to you deep. Right. There were like a few moments that I could name. Like there's been moments where um, even witnessing my, my parents marriage at that time, mm -hmm. like they, they've overcome so much. They, sure. this year they'll be celebrating 30 years of marriage Dang. and it's such a blessing because I, being the oldest, have been able to witness the good, the bad, the ugly, the ups, the downs, the hell, the high water of their marriage. Right. And um, at one point it was bad. Yeah. It was just, it was just bad. Yeah. And I have always been a person that was like, oh, I can't wait to get married. Like I'm the firstborn daughter. My father walking me down the aisle to my husband. Like I, I want to, I want to be a wife. I want to be a mom. I want to be this. I want to be that. And I want to have a family of my own. But there were moments where I was like, is this what I have to look forward to mm. i have a question and, I, and honestly i want to be honest saying that i i like sitting back being able to hear you because like i i know misa the best you know what i'm saying yeah. so it's like mm -hmm. being able to hear things but genuinely asking because we've talked and you've said with you being the older sibling yeah and with you leading me so you 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 used to lead so much in team ministry and president mm -hmm. of student council secretary like like you you always had this leader position um how was it maintaining that at a young age you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying from That's like good. from like from school and then now to at home you know you're the sibling you're the oldest sibling and then in church like was there a pressure like how did you did that weight ever overwhelm you in any That's sense good. every day <laughs> <laughs> Every day, Mia. That's some but but I, I <laughs> it's funny because Lisa always just talks of how she with being the older sibling, she feels like the guinea pig. And like she's always oh, talking about how like the, the yes. I, I've always heard the weights of that, but I'm realizing now, like, wow, you really you played a leadership Carrie, role and at a young age mm -hmm. for so many different areas. And I'm just curious to what that was like for you. Mm, that is such a good question. How did I how did I do it? You know? Um I think I had a lot of great role models. There was always a teacher I could look up to. Right. There was always, um, like my parents, there was always other friends that I could kind of like sharpen myself up against, mm. you know, or, um, I mean, even, even you, me, I mean, you, you might have been younger than me, but between the both of us, you're the most mature. Like I am <laughs> super immature, <laughs> super like me. will be like, grow up seriously. <laughs> needs to grow up. But the thing is, is I've always had I've always had people that were there to either push me or encourage me. Um, 
my parents being one of them, um, they they have they have definitely put pressure on me to make sure that I was doing what I needed to always be doing. Yeah. Uh, look after my siblings. If I had to make them something to eat, I was always the one that was able to do it because I was I was responsible. I was very yeah. responsible. But um, I I think having those teachers that were also able to be like you know hey Misa I, I see this in you and I think that's important. It's always important to have someone that you can pour into. Uh, my pastor says that the most important letters is I C N U. Mm. Find something that you can find. Find someone you can mentor. Mm. Find somebody that you can uh, bring up with you. You know what I'm saying? Or disciple even. And I always had great role models that were around me to encourage me and, and tell me what I should be doing at that time. That's you know. So, good. so that was that was what I I was able to kind of keep it together and lead in different areas. That no, way. it's dope. I mean, you, 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 you give like a lot of like leadership and big sister energy. It, it was really like, uh, I think like humanized to hear, you know, some of, some of your struggles and some mm -hmm. of that dynamic. Cause it's like, sometimes the older sibling, the leader of people, I always be like curious, like, yes, what's, what's, the, what's, what's the ding in the arm? I mean, yeah. yeah. Cause I think yeah. We, we, yeah. that's, that's what makes you, you for sure. Yeah. For sure. But, but like, yeah, even so, so talking about like my, my parents and, and seeing their ups and downs of their marriage, um, I think there was even a time where uh, me and I, we have this best friend, a group of friends that I was telling you about that we grew up going to the same church. Uh, she tragically died in a car accident. Mm. That about broke me. Mm. Ace. And it, mm. it's kind of like I, I, I sat back and asked myself, like, mm. you know, God, this is your child. Why didn't why wasn't she? Why was she not protected? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like she wasn't doing anything bad. There are bad people out here that are getting away scot-free doing scot -free, nonsense for sure. you know and then there was even moments where I knew that even when we started Eminem Live Radio I'm like I know that I'm doing this for a higher cause I'm doing this for God I'm doing this for the kingdom people need this stuff people need 116 you know like, like they, they need this music mm. and you mm. would see people that are just doing things in the worldly realm for sure and they will be elevated quick way quicker than you or other people that's like <laughs> getting the, the flowers and getting the accolades or getting the acknowledgements. And I'm like, I've been in the trenches mm. all these years, working hard, keeping my nose down, like really mm. trying to stay focused. Keeping your nose clean too. Keeping, you know? your, mm. keeping your nose clean, keeping your nose down, <laughs> doing, doing what you I need to. I feel you. And, and you're, like, you're overlooked. You're overlooked and underappreciated. Mm. And it's moments like that where I'm like, maybe Eminem Live Radio went for us. Mm. Like maybe we should kind of do something mm. on a different scale. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Maybe, maybe, it's just not in it for us, you know. I'm so, so I'm so grateful that you maybe had those moments to ponder, but you, mm -hmm. you guys didn't never give up yeah. because yeah. seeing yeah. To, to, from where I sit, and especially I want to get into this more, which what's going on now. But I want to close and just say uh, this segment and just say seeing two uh, black women, yeah, uh, that's following the Lord, that's dope, that's cool, uh, and confidently being those uh, moments of re or individuals of reference points for other women mm -hmm. that need to see you guys shine in that way so the accolades are being given to y'all and sometimes in ways where you can't see them yeah because there's so many people that you guys touch and um it's encouraging to know that you uh, went through that but still standing still here yeah. you know what i'm saying so yeah. um definitely want to dive into what's going on in current misa uh, jones life but as we get back in the next segment um we'll take a break right here this is the 116 life holy culture radio series channel 140 be right back y'all and we're back here on the 116 Life here on Holy Culture Radio Sirius XM channel 140. Listen, we have Misa Jones in the building, man. Yes, sir. Yes, Media personality, broadcaster, leader, wife, mom, all yeah. the things. Um, Misa, you've been doing Eminem Live Radio for it'll be 11 years. Whoa. Yes. It'll be 11 years this year. Mm -hmm. How has Eminem Live Radio molded you? Whether it's in professionally, personally, creatively, how how is how has the journey of the past eleven years molded you as an individual? I think it's uh, taught me discipline. Mm -hmm. I think it's taught me discipline because I thought, and yeah, I definitely thought growing up when we started Eminem Live Radio that oh, we're just gonna be the talent. That's it. Yeah, like we just we just hop on the mic. You know, we we do what we do. We have the segments. We have the fun. We have the banter. We have the great conversation, and then that's it. And that's that's not how how life works. I thought that we were gonna have agents and we were gonna have people post for us. Talk about it, brother. And I thought that everything was gonna be cookie cutter. Everything was gonna be just that's it. We mm -hmm. we did the show and then everyone's gonna just love it. And that's just not how it works. Like mm. we had to, we had, I had to learn the importance of discipline mm. and planning and being consistent mm. and posting boy. and making sure that I'm able to 
rise to the occasion and do what I said I'm going to do. Working with you as my sister, as my co-host, I've had to also learn how to trust you and your creative ability and trust my team. There's been so many moments where um, Eminem Live Radio has taught me that you can't do it by yourself. And being a part of other teams outside of Eminem Live Radio has taught me that if you trust in this person, if you want for whatever goal you're trying to accomplish to be accomplished, you, you're not a one man band. Yeah. Mm. You can't do this by yourself. For sure. You've got to make sure that you're leaning on your partner and trusting in them and trusting in their ability so that y'all can get further faster. What are the keys to building a platform that lasts 11 years like Eminem mm. Live Radio? Like what's what's the keys to building something like that that lasts? Because we've seen people, you know, mm. shows come in and out and it's so unfortunate you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Especially even in the CHH space, like, mm -hmm. but being able to have something that lasts, what are, what are the keys to keeping that? I think the biggest key on a chain is to know your why. That's why good. are you doing this? You know, and, and if you if you can't answer your why, then maybe you have to redefine what that is. For sure. You know, because we Eminem Live Radio is is created so that we can give our generation an alternative source of positive entertainment and music. And we know that there are a million radio shows out there, Ace. There's, there's so many other radio shows that, that probably are better than us, that have a, a greater special guest. They have actual, like, better giveaways. They have different things that they offer. But some of them don't last. And I think the reason why we're still standing is because we've been able to sit back and say, okay, well, we know that there are so many artists out there. Mm -hmm. So many um, entertainers out there that are doing it for Christ, that are doing it because they need more exposure. Why don't we be the platform that's able to elevate them, support them in a way in which other people can give their life to Christ? Like I, I, I love that. I love the space of CHH and this field and mm. this industry so much because we're not supporting anybody that's fake, anybody that's whack. Like the Lecrae's, the Andy Minios, the um, No Big Deals, the Juan Days, the Portia Loves, the mm. Queen Lees, like all of the artists mm. that we feature, their hearts are pure. Right. Their hearts are genuine. Their minds are focused on something higher. The, the Miles Minix, they're Shut saving up, people at in an alarming rate at their concerts, jumping up and down. And they look like... They, they, they look like everybody, you know For what I'm sure. saying? They don't look like they're so set apart. I mean, they do in their actions and their habits and their lifestyle. They're sure, set apart. Sure, sure, You know what I'm saying? But they, they look like they look like everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like they, they got their snapbacks on. They got their J's on. You For know what sure. I'm saying? And we have so many young people that are going to these concerts, so many people that are downloading their music, that are coming to Christ through Spotify, through that's platforms, that's through their fair. headphones. And I think that that's something that... That's that's the reason why we do yeah. what we do. Yeah, and we've even yeah. been knowing about the CHH space for only as long as we've been doing Eminem Live Radio. So over the past eleven years, what have what growth have you seen in the CHH scene that you like? You know, like like what, mm -hmm. what's been the progress that you've seen that's been made that you love seeing, whether it's in the artist or like just just talk a little bit about the the growth over the past eleven years that you've seen mm -hmm. from afar. Holy girls up! Come yeah. on, man! Holy yeah. girls are up by a thousand. But not only that, but holy boys they they out here holy too. Holy high boys out here. Holy high boys out here. But uh, but when I tell you at first when we first started. I don't think there were a lot of, yeah. you know, there wasn't a lot of representation. You know what I'm saying? Like with women, especially women of color, you know, like For there sure. wasn't a lot. I mean, shout out to um, um, AI the Anomaly. Like she was out here, but a P was out here like sure. hustling. He Sun Lee, if y'all remember He Sun mm -hmm. Lee, she yeah. was out here in these streets. Erica Jackie, Combo. Jackie was out here. Jackie little, was Jackie. out here. Like, I mean, uh, we had a lot of women. It, it, it was, it was definitely, sorry to cut you off, but it was mm -hmm. definitely light. I mean. How, you, you just seem so overjoyed to I say am, that. I am. I am. Talk about why that's so important. I mean, we we and the, by the way, y'all, we are gonna keep asking this question because we are gonna keep yeah. highlighting women because I think it needs to be said. But go yeah. ahead. So I I think it's important because um, women need to be heard. There's been so many times where in the past, like even not not just in ministry or Christian hip hop, women were just seen and not heard. Hmm. You know, like they they were just there, kind of <laughs> yeah. like as a prop. You know, they were just there as a supporting character they, they never had the opportunity to step into the limelight and speak up because they got something to say I'm, I'm curious with that as women leading that charge and talking about the holy girls mm -hmm. um for you as an interviewer as a leader in the media space mm -hmm. how has that been uh for you to kind of carry your 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 you know who you who guys made you as a black woman yeah and kind of fight that uphill um sometimes discrimination how, how has that been it's been tough is there a moment 
that without you know getting to specifically, but that you can recall that you had to overcome being a woman in the media space that made it difficult for Eminem, Eminem Live Radio to kind of push through and still stand on mm-hmm. the relevant nations that you guys do have. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So so there have been moments where, like, especially when we first started off yeah. and um, we were trying to, like, network, go out to the events and go out to the concerts, support our friends that are artists, and um, we would constantly see, like, the same... And, and this, this is no shade, no hate to the fellas out there. Cause I mean, like we're, we're friends with a lot of them, but we would see like the same guys on the stage and just, you know, jumping around, having a good time with the other fellas, the other guys that are on the roster and there would be no women. Mm. And so it, it, it would be kind of hard to be like, okay, well, I mean, there's, there's so many ladies out here that I feel like can deliver, can be on the stage. And it wasn't, it wasn't a place of pride. Like I want for you to see me. I want for you to see what I could bring Mm -hmm. to the table or bring to the mic. It wasn't that at all. It was just, I feel like there's a change. There needs to be a change for sure to happen. You know, y'all, y'all are leading the change. I mean, like 11 years, uh, a long time. That's a long time. Women led a platform Mm -hmm. interviewing Christian hip hop. I mean, you guys are essentially, I don't mean it's with Cap. You guys are pioneers. Wow, Ace. For real, like pioneers in this, like a, who else? I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, wow. And I think that needs to be said, and you guys need to mm-hmm. get, get, be giving y'all's flowers. Um, Misa, talk about a little bit, what are you excited for currently? Where is your headspace? Um, even maybe Eminem Live Radio, but even more specifically, you as a person, as a mother, a leader, mm-hmm. things you're putting your hands to. What are you excited about currently that's got you like, using your gift still and like uh, adding value to the culture. Yes. So one thing that I am working on that I am very excited about Ace, is I'm, I'm starting to not necessarily branch off of Eminem on radio, but I'm starting to learn more about what my voice can produce and what it can do. Yo. So one thing that I've been tapping into is uh, voiceover artistry. And so um, right now I'm getting my feet wet. I'm getting my feet wet by auditioning for, um, for being a voice to narrate books. And I want to graduate up into doing live voice announcing for like award shows. Um, I want to start doing uh, voice animation for different TV shows and movies and different things. I I, I always thought that that was just so cool to manipulate your voice and just have fun creatively that way. That's so good. And so I I am excited about that. I set up my own home studio. So it's, it's, I'm taking the baby steps and the next, uh, best steps, if you will, to get closer to like my goal doing those things. Um, personally, being a mom, being a wife, uh, ownership, ownership. Talk, talk, so, say more. So, so right now I, I have, um, we have purchased our first home, which is super, super exciting. Can I ask when, when did you purchase? So we purchased, I got it down to the date. It's like recent, December, recent? Yeah, December 22nd of last year. Yo, so we've listen. only been in for a few months, right before Christmas. I would not recommend doing that because it's very, very stressful to move in but around Christmas. But give yourselves like a, a round of applause, like buying a, a new home in this market. In this market is, is crazy. crazy. It's Y'all crazy. did it. Yeah. Shout and out God. For shout real. out God because it, it's been like maybe four years in the making. Whoa. Because we there was a time where my husband and I, we, we fell on hard times. We had to move back in the house with my parents. We bought back two babies from the hospital. And that's not, that's not gangster. Like I can't bring two babies <laughs> back to my mama house. What am I doing? But but we had to do it. The pandemic took place. So I mean, honestly, God had his hand on it from the beginning. But mm-hmm. um, there would be moments where we would try to stay focused, to save money. And it's either we had great credit and no money, or we had the money and we didn't have good credit, you know. And it, so it, it was it was such a teeter totter, but we had to buckle down. We had to get our mm. money right, learn how to budget, go mm. through financial peace. Mm. And I'm so shout out, shout out I'm so mm. grateful to say we are debt free right now. I'm so and it, flex, it's only bro. because of God. It's only because of God. There's nothing in the world right now that I can say is a huge God flex than to say that you're debt free. I don't want no car. I don't want no Lamborghini. I don't want, I don't, I don't need the, 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 the latest shoes. Yo, I'm debt free. I'm almost 30. Mm-hmm. And that is such a big thing and, and huge thing that I want to encourage everybody to do. Mm. Be that's, financial literate. That's so good. I mean, shout out um, just the, the journey. I mean, even you sharing what you and your husband had to go through yeah. to get here. Yeah. Buying a home is no punk, especially no. in the metro Atlanta area. Absolutely. Uh, interest rates. I mean, it's just, it, it is almost, I, I, it's, we could talk for hours about a lot that. Go, yeah. A lot goes into it. Sure. A lot yeah. goes into it. And I feel like that's, that, that has by far been the most adult thing that I've done thus far. 
Having kids, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah having kids. <laughs> forgot about that. I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> Getting married. Absolutely. Yes. yes. Right. Yeah. But like Somewhere by, by far, like, and especially because like being married, you have to marry your finances and work together with somebody that's good, else. Yeah. Like that's just something that I feel like I had to really focus. I feel like we need to do like, this is, yeah. this is, this is Christian hip hop needs like an adulting life skills like Absolutely. conference oh, yo be so fire because just like some yes. basic yes life skills stuff that mm -hmm. i feel like people are not thinking about especially mm -hmm. in the creative mm -hmm. community which yeah you're using your gifts and you're trying to tap into other things i mean we talk about this all the time mm -hmm. sometimes the creative community is just like a little bit slower mm -hmm. to understand those things because and it is biblical and yeah. i think it's godly so yeah shout out you and your and your husband for owning that going Thank through that you. and being Thank on the you. other side of it because it is yeah. not it is not easy no it's not. um yeah, is there anything you want to leave our, our audience with um, as we kind of wrap it up, um, Misa? Like anything that, you know, you want to just share that God's put on your heart about this season, your journey or anything? Yeah, mm. the mic is yours, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I think if anything, if you can, and this is in every aspect, every area of your life, do your absolute best, give yourself some grace, and always try to find that 1%. That's one thing that I've been mm. learning lately is finding that 1%. I read this book called The Compound Effect. And I believe that it's, the author is, uh, his name is Darren Hardy. I believe that's his name. But I, I read that book and that has radically changed my life. He talked so much about finding that 1%. If you're trying to get better, don't try to get better by 10%. Don't try to get better by 50%. Try to find that one thing. Hmm. One small thing even that you can do consistently every single day. It's going to create ex like ex like so substantial amount of just difference in results. Um, I think he had an illustration um, in his book where he talked about if you're in a plane and you're only supposed to drive completely straight, fly completely straight in that plane from, let's say, New York to Georgia, straight down. If you turn the nose of that plane by 1%, you will make your way all the way in like Texas. You know oh. what I'm saying? So it's like if you can find that small thing, I don't care if it's going to the gym every day for 15 minutes. I don't care if it's rolling out of your bed at 7 o'clock and doing 25 push-ups every single day. If you're consistent, that consistent thing is key. But if you do one thing every single day consistently, it will make such a compounding interest a change in your life. So if, if I could leave crazy. with anything, crazy, find that thing, find that one thing, even if it's complimenting somebody every single day, you're going to find gratitude in that. Mm -hmm. If it's, if it's calling your mom, you're going to find yourself, you know, maybe forgiving her more for mm -hmm. the things that you felt like you couldn't forgive her for. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Sense. So it's like just finding that one little, one little percent that you could do every single day to change your life. I mean, clearly you've been doing that. That's my sister, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> The proud little sis. Nah. Misa, thank you for being here. Um, you have lived, well, of course, with me seeing it, but I'm happy that people were able to hear the life that you live because you've overcome so many different things and the life that you live just speaks so mm. many volumes to so many different people. Thank you for being here. Thank Is there anything you, you want to plug? Social media, your sh the show, anything that you want to plug? Go ahead, The Four Joys. Man, I got to do better posting on social media. <laughs> it's dry right now, you know? But uh, but yeah, so my, my social media on Instagram is Misa Jones. That's M-E-E-S-A J-O-N-E-S. That's me also on Facebook. And um, um, if I can, you know, Eminem Live Radio, you know, uh, that's that's M M Live Radio on Instagram. Listen, man, shout out to Misa Jones being in the building here on the 116 Live. That's another, that's a wrap, y'all, for another good episode here of the 116 Live. Listen, Ace, Misa, myself, we are signing off here. We'll see you guys next week here on the 116 Live here on Holy Culture Radio, Sirius XM, Channel 140. We'll see you guys soon.